Good afternoon. Hello, church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I praise God for you. I ask God to glorify all of you today. I'm excited to be broadcasting from our home. And uh, thank you so much for your prayers. My dad is doing really good. He's um, stable, as stable as could be. And it's allowing me now to come home in the evenings and then go back out in the later afternoon. So thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, they have been very mighty and tearing down strongholds. I'm going to be releasing to you the anatomy of soul ties. This is part of chapter six in your finger of God book study that we are doing together collectively as a church. And this is probably one of the most important areas in this book to be examined thoroughly by the body of Christ more thoroughly, I believe, than the writer has given you the opportunity to. And so I'm going to be attaching some more biblical understanding to chapter six for you so that you have a, um, a little bit more of an awareness of the seriousness of being aware of the situational state. Okay, so listen to me. Being aware of the situational state of your soul and having understanding of the situational state of your soul and how it is different, okay, from your spirit. Why must you examine your soul? Why must you examine your soul? Hello, good morning, everybody. Christina, nice to see you on here. Cindy Gill, my dear friend, nice to see you on here. I pray that God is glorifying and blessing you both this morning abundantly. And Father God, we just lift your holy presence into this broadcast, into this teaching. Father God, I ask that your Holy Spirit be among those who are engaging in it, who are looking for a place of refuge, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that you are the restorer of our souls. And we release that to you this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to continue it to explore the ways the enemy gains access into our lives. And part of that access, it's imperative that we take an in-depth look of our own personal souls. Now, what is, now Now, some of this is in your book and some of this is not. So I'm going to be traveling a little bit all over the place. But what is your soul? The Bible talks about your soul um, quite a bit. David talks about the state of his soul. And so I think it's very, very important that we have a situational awareness of the state of our own soul for the, for the sake of per preservation, for the sake of heaven being heaven bound, and for the sake to keep us from ending up in soulish areas and traveling to places that the Lord does not want us to travel. Amen. So one of the ways that the enemy gains access is in our lives, is in our soul. There are many doors and passageways into your soul that the enemy uses. If you go on my YouTube channel, I do an in-depth study of those doors and gates. And do we do a cleansing so that you can be free, so that your mind can think clear, okay? So that you can think good thoughts, so that you don't have constant oppression, sickness, disease, and physical ailments. Your soulish realm of your being needs sanctified. Everybody's soulish realm of their being needs sanctified. Why? Because we live in a fallen world. Because we live around people that are messed up. Because those messed up people influence us. Okay? And then when we become messed up, now we be, become the people that are messing other people up. And so it's very, very important that we have an understanding that we have a weakness in our soul. That we have deficits. The soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions, okay? Now, this is biblical. 
the Bible has a lot to say about the soul and I'm going to give you some biblical references before I move on to the book study that we are doing. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 In this letter to Thessalonica from St. Paul, he says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Listen to this. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Sanctification is a process. It's not a one and done. It's not a one and done deal. Then he says, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we know according to the Bible that our being has a spirit and a soul and a body. I'm very passionate about talking about these three areas. Today we're talking about the soul. Hebrews 4.12, this letter in Hebrews, listen to this, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God, which is Jesus is the word of God. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing to the division of the soul and the spirit. This is how serious it is that we're aware of the position, that we're aware of the state of our soul. It's so serious that God gave us the word of God, the Bible, so that when we read it, the, bre the breath of God in the Bible is able to separate the state of your soul from the spirit in you that is joined to him. There are two different areas. Many Christians don't realize that they have a soul that's, that's in the body and they have a spirit. It's completely different and we're going to go over that. But the word of God pierces to the division of the soul and the spirit, joints and marrow, and the discerning and thoughts and intentions of the heart. Why does the Bible say that? Because your soul carries the intentions of your heart. It carries your feelings. It carries the discerning of your thoughts, which is your mind. Your will and your emotions are all in the place of the soulish realm. The Bible teaches us that we are not to be led by our feelings, but we are to be led by the spirit of the living God. Many of us need to put to death how we feel because how you feel is causing destruction in your area. It's causing destructions in your relationships and it's keeping you from your destiny. Because you're focused on how you feel. Your mind has got the best of you and you don't know how to submit your mind to the will of God. You don't know how to hold every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Therefore, your soul is fractured. Your soul is fractured. Know that the devil does not have authority or access in our lives on his own. The Bible says that he, he prowls like a lion seeking who he can devour. He's seeking, he's looking for somebody who has their soul not under control. You have full control of your mind, your will, and emotions. You have full control. God has given you the capacity for the sustainability of choice. Some of you are giving the devil too much credit. The devil made me do it. No, 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 no. If the devil is making you do everything that you're doing that's out of the will of God, then you have company. You need deliverance, friend. And this is why you're in this group. If you cannot control your flesh, you need deliverance, okay? And you need to contact our ministry so that we can help you. And this is part of the finger of God Bible study as so that you can get delivered, okay? Soul ties. We're going to talk about soul ties. They are a major loophole 
that the devil uses to bind a believer in Christ through soul ties, through having relationships with people that we should not be having relationships with, or we have these thoughts about people, we have given ourselves over and surrendered to these people, we seek these people for counsel, for advice, and we've become more dependent and reliable on these people, so tied to these people, instead of the spirit of the living God. And many of these soul ties are unhealthy. Many of these soul ties, these people are not led by the spirit of God. Your therapist, your counselor, the people that you are dating, do they bring you in a place of peace? Do they play, bring you in a place where you are in the Prince of Peace presence? Amen. Deliverance is not just a spiritual issue. It's a soulish issue. In fact, it mainly resides in the soul. Traditionally, many people think that soul ties are only through the encounter of a man and a woman being intimately intertwined together. And many people believe this and only this because the Bible says when a man and a woman join together, they become one. Therefore, they're so tied together. So this man that may have been with several women and this woman that may have been with several man, men, now they become joined together intimately and all those people and souls that this woman's attached to and all those people and souls that this man is attached to are now together. And now not far down the line, since you became so tied with this person, all of a sudden you start having anxiety, you start having freak accidents, you start having physical ailments. All of these things start happening that didn't happen before. And now you start to see a track record. Well, this is all new. This is all a new thing that's happened because these people have not been sanctified before you got joined together. They weren't sanctified. You weren't sanctified yourself. You didn't even know there was such a thing as sanctification and deliverance through the power of Jesus. Not just an inheritance of heaven when you die, but deliverance on earth from all of the enemy's oppression in your life. That's why it's so important that when you marry, when you date, when you have your best friend, you're equally yoked equally joined together yoked equally yoked the dangers of being unaware of the condition of your soul are great it's dangerous everything that you think feel do will flow through your heart if your mind and your will and your emotions are not in line with the spirit of the living God, oh, you are going to have problems, folks. You will have problems. You're already going to have problems when you're trying your best to do it right. Because the Bible says to, to take heart that, that you will have trouble. Now throw on top of the pile a fractured soul or somebody who doesn't know how to control their flesh or doesn't even know that it's a thing to do as a Christian. And now you just lead a life of destruction and despair and sadness and anxiety and physical health ailments. And the list goes on and on and on. Kids that want to, you know, commit suicide and then everybody is on drugs and then everybody is sleeping with everybody and there's just no joy. There's no happiness. The spirit of God isn't moving and you have no idea why. And you must step back and look, what is the state of my soul? Everybody all over the world is seeking therapists, psychologists, um, anti-anxiety medicines. They're seeking people for mental trauma and emotional pain and all of these uncontrollable desires that they're trying to find in a pill form. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, I died on the cross to save you from your flesh. 
He died on the cross to save you from your flesh. Yes, doctors are good. Counselors are good. Therapists are good. We have seen them. We have sat at length and spoke with them. They are important in a season of one's life. But know that you have to eventually yield to the creator who made you and knows how this flesh functions. Eventually, you need to go to God and separate yourself from what the world has to offer and let Jesus, let Jesus remove the enemy of your soul. Amen. Be mindful that the soul of man came from the spirit of God. So he knows how your soul works. Genesis 2, 7. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Those of you on here know the breath of life is the Ruach spirit. It's the, the Hebrew word for Ruach. So God breathed into this vessel, his spirit, and man became a living soul. So he was a spirit being first, became a living soul who walked with God on the earth. Who walked with God, spoke with God, hung out with God, heard God saw God, was obedient to God, had everything at his fingertips, had all beauty that you can imagine. No sin was in the presence of man when he was formed until the devil came on the scene. And the man became a living soul, formed and fashioned by God himself. He did something to man that he didn't do to any other creation. No dog, no favorite pet, no bird, no lion, your favorite animal, an elephant, a giraffe. I don't care what it is. The first thing that he did differently with us when he formed us from the dust of the ground as he spoke his spirit into us. Nothing that has life on this earth has a spirit of God operating in them and communicating in such a divine way that he is gifted and devoured to us to do. No other living being on earth other than the human being. Even the devil himself does not have what we have under the, the grace of God. Giving us and delegating authority to flesh who submit to him by giving us the promised Holy Spirit. Amen. He blew the spirit of life into the nostrils of man and he became a living soul. That in itself, folks, should tell you where you go for a fractured soul. The church, the church has been miserably deficient in this area and helping people revive their souls, getting counsel from people who actually are tapped into the ways and the things of spirit and helping them get free through deliverance, through prayer. Countless people our ministry has freed from trauma due to fractured words that have been spoken because they have been soul tied to the wrong people and they're listening to the wrong voices whatever you become one with you become soul tied to you will operate and function in the way and the thoughts of those people you will have the same average income the same average thought process the same average weight because you will all think celebrate and do in the same way are the people you are with, all the organizations you were attached to, are they led by the Spirit of God? Your five closest friends around you should be yoked equally to, equally to your spirit, to your soul. Equally yoked.
the soul of man came from the spirit of God, so it must return to the spirit of God for restoration. It must return to the factory of God when he made you. One time I had a dream and in this dream God took me into a room and I opened up a refrigerator and this in this refrigerator I saw lungs, I saw kidneys, I saw hearts, I saw all of the different um, body parts of the inside of the body of flesh stored in a refrigerator in heaven and God was telling me I have all of the parts here but all you have to do is seek me through prayer open up the refrigerator I will release that body part to you and I will restore you back to health Pamela, have a nice day. God bless you. Your soul has been given to you because you have been given the freedom of choice and the freedom to create. The freedom of choice and the freedom to create. You can either create and recreate the vision that God has given you to further his kingdom to save souls, to save lives. When God decided to make man, he wanted to give man the capacity to not only just commune with him, but to move like him on earth. Jesus died for this. He died for this so that he could send you the promised Holy Spirit. God gave man the ability to think to feel and choose his way into a relationship with him, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And if you are not able to do that, my friend, you have company. If you are not able to commune with your Lord, if you cannot deny your flesh and command it to settle down, if your mind and the will and your emotions is to give you self-gratification, self-gain, your own self-preservation, and you don't have God at the forefront as a person that, that you are looking to yield to, to please, to further the kingdom, and it's all about me, 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 you have a problem. Your soul is fractured. It has deficits. If there's a person that, if you mention their name, as soon as you hear their name, you start weeping and you start crying, you are still soul tied to the person that you need separated from because they're no longer in your life. They're no longer in your life. The soul is comprised of three distinct attributes, and we just read about it in the Bible. I gave you the scripture at the beginning of this broadcast to support the ministry that we're delivering today. And your soul is divided into your mind, your will, and emotions, all of which need cross-examination by you. Understanding each part of your soul will allow you to see where soul ties are happening. So a soul tie is a linkage in the soulish realm between an individual, an idea, an organization, or another person. You have allowed that to happen through communication, intimacy, and vulnerability. One needs to learn how to establish boundaries when they meet people, when they meet organizations, Sometimes when people meet new people, they, they jump all in and they want to become part of their lives because they want to become part of something. They want friendships, they want relationships, and they haven't examined the state of that person's soul or if they're spirit-led or if they're joined one with the Lord. I'm not saying to not minister to the people. We're talking about your closeness with people, your inner circle, the inner core. Even when you're studying the inner core of the earth itself, it's preserved. You can't even see it. Your inner core must be preserved, must have watchmen established at all of the gates. Your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions is it yielding to the Lord himself.
two souls joined together could actually be beneficial if you are equally in the same place. But like I said earlier, it will produce very, very negative results when not. Placing boundaries, cross-examinations, prayer with your father. Lord, <coughs> is this somebody that you have sent to me divinely to minister to? Or are they to be part of my life and part of my family? Are we to be joined together? Five, I'm going to give you five areas to examine that you'll know if you're in a wrong soul tie. Number one, when you start making excuses for someone else's behavior. Everybody is telling you about this person and how unhealthy they are. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, I've had a little bit of a cold, so hold on. People are sharing with you the unhealthiness of somebody that you've been around. And you know that their behaviors are not in correct order with the word of the Lord. The way that they think, the things that they do, their emotions, how stable are their emotions? Are they all over the place? Are they always in a place of fear? Are they always crying? When they go to do a good thing, is it for the Prince of Peace or is it for themselves? Oh, that felt great to do that today. I'm going to go do that tomorrow. <coughs> Self-examination. Number two. So number one is when you start making excuses to other people for someone's behavior, you know that you have somebody on your territory that does not belong. When you start trivializing your time and energy. When you start trivializing all of your time and all of your energy. You make excuses to not go to prayer meetings. You make excuses not to go to church. You make excuses not to sit and do Bible studies or to get engaged with other believers. And you're trivializing your own time and your own energy for the sake of people that actually pull you away from the Lord and set a bring you closer to him. You know that you're in wrong relationship number three when sin starts to separate you from God. I've seen this happen to so many Christians. <coughs> Excuse me. Christians that were very close to the Lord and then they went through a bad marriage. Their husband maybe cheated on them or their wife cheated on them and now they start pulling away from God because they start to blame God for the acts of the flesh that their mate did and so now they start to pull away from God and they start to sin themselves. They start to develop new relationships with people that are going out, getting drunk, and God's not the first thing on their mind and then they begin to blame the church. Okay, it's a cycle that begins to start, but you know that when you start to sin, when you start to swear, when you start to cuss, when you start to gossip about other people, when you start to do things that, that you really have died to, but now that they're resurfacing again, you know that you're in the wrong community of people and you've got to break those soul ties. When there's a progressive, number four, Progressive irreverence for the mental, emotional, and physical health of another person. <coughs> this is so important. <coughs> I'm on the tail end <coughs> of a cold, so hang on one minute. <coughs> oh, Father God, I just lift this to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I command this thing attacking my soul, my body, my physical health to stop irritating now in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Progressive irreverence for mental, emotional, and physical health of another person. Meaning you're not getting engaged 
and you're not situationally being aware of the soulless state in regards to their mental state, emotional state, and their physical state. You're not even thinking about it. You already know that there's a problem if you're not even thinking about it. If it's not even on the table, if it's not even a thought, you've just accepted them for what they are and then that's it and they're in your life, they're over for dinner, you're out to movies together, you're going on vacations together, but, <coughs> but you're really enjoying it because you've got a body. So if it's more important to your flesh that you have a body then having being equally yoked there's there's a problem i'm just being my my job is to lead you is to shepherd you back to the light away from darkness into light this broadcast is not about guilt shame and condemnation my job is to give you truth okay why because the truth will set you free and many of you are in bondage because of the relationships that are either in your family and your friends that you need to sever and you need to sit with God and talk with him about it. Number five, when you continually let your carnal or led by your carnal senses, you know that you have influences around you that are help contributing to you being led by your carnal thought and you're not being led by the ways and the things of the spirit of the Lord. These are your mind, your will, and your emotions. The kingdom of darkness is very strategic and is always trying to sabotage the process and the progress of your future by trying to get you attached to the wrong things. Okay, Cindy, nice to see you, sis. By trying to get you attached to the wrong things. That's what the enemy sends people out on assignment, okay, in the kingdom of darkness to get you attached to the wrong things so that you don't complete the mission of the Lord. Why? Because his mission was terminated. He was thrown out of heaven. He don't have a mission with the God. He has his own mission and it's all darkness. It's to divert you. That's the kingdom of darkness. That's what the devil wants to do. When boundaries are broken, space for the demonic realm to advance in your life then is created. It's then created. Soul ties are created through intimacy. Now listen, it doesn't have to be um, having sex together as intimacy can be emotional intimacy. Pouring out one soul to another person and putting your soul in the hands of that other person. And now they're molding it and making it into what they want it to be. Soul tie. Intimacy is a lot more than sex. It's letting a person into your goals, your apprehensions, your struggles. It's sharing your heart, your mind, will, and emotions with this person all the time. Welcoming people in to see the nakedness of you. Who are you doing life with that you do that with? Who? Make a list. Who is it? <clears throat> who is it Tony Evans did a great video uh, a broadcast that my son was telling me about and one of the things he said is he would rather have two friends he's equally yoked with than 10 friends in their life that that they're not equally yoked to two two friends <laughs> When sharing your traumas with people who don't share your own same convictions, you open the door for your mind and will and emotions to be tethered to a perspective that is unhealthy for your growth. That is very unhealthy for your growth. When your mind and your soul is attached to another person that it's not supposed to be attached with your perspective of the world, is now connected and influenced by his or her perspective and not the perspective of the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't think properly. You won't think properly. You won't think at the standard of the Lord. 
in this book, the author says he likes to call this area of the soul a mind tie instead of a soul tie because you now begin you begin to think and feel as the perspective uh, of the world instead of the state and the mind of a believer in Christ rooted and grounded without shifting sands. When the church is established on the rock and it has a firm foundation, it does not move. That should be your friend's circle, friends. That should be your friend's circle, your friend zone. Not just people that you go see on Sunday and then you have a whole separate group of friends over here that you go golfing with, that you go do life with, and you're out doing a completely different thing that you would never bring into the church. You're double-minded. You're double-minded. The Bible says that if you are lukewarm, Jesus said, I will spit you, spew you out of my mouth. It's frustrating to the Lord to see his church double-minded and shifting on sands that they could have control over if they could gain control over their own flesh. And like I said, not everything you can blame on the enemy. <clears throat> You're welcome, Michelle. <clears throat> not everything you can blame on the enemy. People get stuck in mentally abusive and manipulative relationships because they feel connected to that person and they allow the truth of their abuser to be irrationally rationalized. This is a real thing. People come for therapy for this and they're going through physical or mental abuse over and over and over and over and, and we're even having people, I'm not, I'm not, um, I probably shouldn't go down there. I'm not going to go down there because <clears throat> it's a whole nother talk. But, but friend, you need to get away. You need to get away. Or pray for God to intervene in a dangerously mighty way to separate that from you somehow, some way. And they make excuses for their offense or for their offense. Mind ties are the strongest places of fantasy and in, it's in the place of their memory. They're fantasizing. They're fantasizing. Your kids need to watch us, Angie. Oh, bring it to the schools. This needs taught in Christian schools. Amen. It's so important not to invest in a relationship that was not born in the will of the Lord, period. If it's not born in the will of the Lord, then it needs disregarded. And I've, I just heard this over the weekend from somebody that, that is trying to come into, in, into my world and, and I can't allow it to happen. But they said to me, well, even Jesus sat with sinners. Even Jesus did this. Jesus sat with the tax collector and the prostitutes. Yeah, he brought the glory of God to them and freed them. And if they didn't accept it, he dusted his feet off and he left and he moved on. He didn't make his life with them. That's a misrepresentation of who Jesus is, who is holy. His job by the Father is to reinstate holiness on earth and power in the saints. Not to succumb to sin and accept it. Why would he die on the cross? Why would God even go through such horrific states of affairs? If sin now just became norm and he wanted you to stay in it, we're called to turn away from sin and walk in holiness with the Lord. So many people need to break free from deception, <clears throat> but they don't because they have put their hope in a fantasy of what a relationship could be or what it used to be. How many of you have a husband or a friend or a cousin or whoever, you know who they used to be. And so you fantasize, oh, I know what they used to be like. 
and they'll get back to that state one day. He never used to drink. He never used to drink. He never used to cuss. And, and he's just going through a season. He's just going through a phase 15 years down the road. Five years down the road, it's a phase. No, they're under demonic oppression and they need help. And if they're not willing to get it, recognize it. You need to separate. Many people start off equally yoked and then the other person goes off in one direction and the other person goes another. And it's a hot mess because they didn't walk together with the Lord in the first place. They were yoked, but they weren't walking with the Lord, walking with the Lord together. It's one thing to be equally yoked when you first meet, and then you become soul tied. Now, when you're soul tied, you're doing something together. Another link to soul ties are emotions. Testimony of people's souls being so bound to each other. Okay, listen to this, that they could feel the emotion of their friend while their friend was at work or their friend was a thousand miles away and they could feel the emotion of their friend. That is an emotional soul tie and I don't believe that to be biblical unless the Lord has given you a prophetic word to pray for that person. I know that that's happened to me when I picked up by the spirit of the living God, um, a, 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 a rooted sadness in somebody. And I know that it was an unction to act as an intercessor prayer to pray. But if you're picking up on soul ties through soul ties and picking up emotions of people without having any natural communication and they're not with the Lord, that's dangerous. <clears throat> this type of communication is soulish. It's dangerous, especially when it's with someone who is not your destiny partner. If they're not your destiny partner, now, now let's not, Jeff, I see your, I see your comment. Let's not, mistaken this for people who are called in the office of a prophet okay people who are operating in the prophetic will pick up in the spirit emotion it's a call to action for prayer and release but outside of that outside of that no emotions are not meant to be a guide for us they're designed to be a gauge for a need of hurts and issues. When you allow emotions to lead your decision making, you'll always find yourself doing what you feel. Instead, because of what you feel, something doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. Just because you feel this way. What, what do people say in the world now? Well, I'm going to see how I feel about it. I want to see how I feel when I go home. I want to see how I feel when I separate from me. But no, 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 no. The Bible says that we don't operate through feelings. That we are to die to the flesh. And that we are to seek the spirit of the living God who created your soul and your decision making in the first place. Free your mind, free your soul from contaminants of devastation and destruction of your inner circle who's not supposed to be yoked to you. You have people even that have been put in ministry in the church or put in positions in the church where they need a cleansing stream to happen before they get into that ministry. I'm here to tell you, even the small ministry that we have here, if you haven't went through deliverance first in a cleansing stream, you are not working for Sword of the Earth Ministries. You're not. Your soul needs purged. Just like the Bible says, may your mind, body, spirit, soul be kept blameless. All emotions should be filtered through the Holy Spirit. They all get filtered through the Holy Spirit. There is a filtering. If you can even think, if you've ever established a fish tank 
and you put the fish in nice clean water that you just put fresh water in that tank and at the top of the tank you put a filter in there and the fish go to the bathroom and all this stuff happens and they eat and and there's all kinds of things happening in the tank and then all of the waste gets filtered up through the tube down through a filter again for the water to be purified the water in you you have a filtration system come on somebody by the promised holy spirit that is in motion and it gets sanctified every time you meet with your lord you get intimate with your lord you bring your will your emotions and your mind to the lord that filter gets put to use through the promised Holy Spirit. Emotion is a fundamental component of all intimate relations. And it must be cross-examined thoroughly before stepping into that relationship. A new relationship can change the next five years of your destiny with the Lord. It's not to be taken lightly, church. Negative emotions present a signal that something's not going well in what's motivating you during change. They're signals. The drive for change in soul ties that are unhealthy are ignored. Unless, unless the church points it out unless the church preaches on it, unless the church gets engaged in the carnal world and addresses these carnal things, the people that are destined to move with the Lord remain stagnant. The final major factor in soul ties is the will. This is the last one, the will. When in the soul tie, your desires are all out of whack. When you're in a soul tie, your will becomes different. I see this in, in, in marriages because sometimes in marriages, people can't hold their own thought. And they'll say, well, I'm going to go check with my husband. Oh, I'm going to go check with my wife. How about sit with the Lord and ask him the will and then go to your husband or wife and say, I sat with the Lord and this is what I felt. He told me about the will for me to do this. Or they call their friend. They call their cousin. What is the will in your heart to go feed the homeless? Do you want to post a thousand posts on Facebook and get a thousand clicks so that everybody could see that you did a good deed? Meanwhile, the Bible says not to voice your good deeds to the world because your Father in Heaven will reward you in the end for doing it in secrecy anyway. I see people that every time they go do something or every time they meet somebody, they, they want everybody to see that they were with them. What is your will? What is your will? Your will. Your heart. Examine the heart. Because through it flow the rivers of your life. Period. Soul ties will make you desire a relationship with a person even when everything about that person is dangerous. <coughs> Once you're tied, you're tied. Once you made that commitment, you made that commitment and you can undo it through prayer. It becomes very, very dangerous. Countless people try to get free from soul ties where they mentally knew the relationship was dangerous. They emotionally were actually even scared of the individual, but they still desired the other person. They still desire them. Because there's something about them that's good. Even though they behave the way that they do. Friends, it's not healthy. We do a retreat every year and explain what soul ties are and have them write everything down at the end and an act of release. That's awesome, Angie. That's great. That's great, great, great. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. 
many of this has to do, and, 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 and I see this happen <clears throat> with many people where they're so tied to a partner for sex. I would just say it. I mean, it's a real thing. Friends with benefits. <laughs> you do that, friend, let me tell you. You have in invited so many demons that are in the world into your world. And they're there. With the ones that you already were having. That need to go. Desire is strongest when the focus is on pleasure that a person can give you more than the pain that that person causes you. Let me give you an example. There are people that are very afraid to be alone. And so the pleasure that that person is getting from the other person is, is just having a body, a body be there. Maybe they're a fun jokester. Maybe they're a Mr. Funny Girl or a funny guy and they can make you laugh. But every time you leave their presence, you're hurt. Or they're hurting others. Yeah, but he makes me laugh. Yeah, but he buys me nice clothes. Yeah, but I have a roof over my head and we share the bills together. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. No, none of that is designed by the Lord. None of that is designed by the Lord to live together to save money till you get married. It's deception, saints. It's deception. You're designed for intimacy, but at a different level with different relationships who are holy in Christ, who care about your mind, will, and emotions, who support you on a firm foundation and not on those sifting sands. And when you are with someone that you are equally yoked with, that God paired you up with, you will move mountains together. Look at the disciples who were equally yoked and Jesus sent them out two by two. The destruction they did in the enemy's camp was great. It was great. The church is so unequally yoked now and they're wondering why they can't have an upper room experience. It's because they have all of these open doors to the flesh that need shut. If you're going to be an effective deliverance minister and you're seeking to be a deliverance minister, you have to be prepared for the bloody battle that comes from soul ties. Because it's probably part of the biggest form of deliverance needed. Soul ties from dead people. Soul ties from necromancy. Soul ties from the deceased. Soul ties from people that people have, you know, slept with that they shouldn't. Soul ties from you know, cousins, aunts, uncles, soul ties from um, secret societies that are in bloodlines. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And the next chapter, chapter seven, will be about breaking the legal ground of these soul ties. And then in this book, he starts to dive in it. In this chapter, I added a lot of my own content. Most of it was my own content. <clears throat> I'm going to pray with you now, and then we will continue chapter 7 next week. We'll pick up on page 73. Those of you who are going to play this back, there's no time with God the prayer that I'm about to pray will be just as effective as it is right now. But I want to encourage you who have watched this video, listened to this video. I'm asking you to do a cross-examination of your mind, your will, and emotions. Have three separate sheets of paper laid out on the table. Mind, will, emotions, Write down your deficits. Talk to the Lord about every area of your soul. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the doors that need shut. And be prepared for next week. Be honest with yourself. Ask the person that you trust that is in your world where the deficits are that they can even maybe reveal to you along with the Holy Spirit. But it's time to get this right, friends. Time is getting short. It's getting so short. I don't think the church understands the speed of when Jesus is coming. We got to be ready. You got to have your lamps 
full of oil, lit, wicks trimmed, with a reservoir of oil on the side. You don't want to be the one that goes to the door knocking on the door when Jesus comes and the door is shut because you have an empty lantern. This is part of the oil, folks. This is how you fill your lanterns. This is how you trim your wick. This is how you get new wine skins because you got to get rid of the old wine skins. Everybody's asking for new wine. Lord, give me new wine, but yet you're not ready to put to death the old wine skin and throw it out. You got to deal with your soul because it's at enmity with God without the fractures. That's scripture. Let me pray for you. Father God, right now, I pray for every person that's in this broadcast and on this broadcast. Everybody that has been listening, Lord, that has been surrendering their emotions, their mind, and their soul ties to you during this time, Lord. I ask you to bind the strong man now in their life. Lord, I thank you that we can come boldly to your throne. And we bind the strong man. And I command it to leave in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave in the name of Jesus now. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that your will be done. And that you continue the work in our life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, if you're listening to this broadcast and you want to do a one-on-one, you contact me. We will do it. Or if you want to wait till the next broadcast because we're going to be doing um, a deliverance prayer at the end, we can wait till next week. But there's a sense of urgency on the, on the clock with all of this. It's time to get it right in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God keep you the rest of your day today. Good night or goodbye. I'll see you soon.